Hey guys, uh, today I got a little project that I want to try to get knocked out. One of the small jobs on my list for my personal needs around here in the shop. I've uh, got a few that I want to try to get done. So I'm going to start with this one. Pretty simple. Thought I'd show you what I'm going to do, okay? Grab the camera and walk you over to the grinder. I got to do something to the pedestal grinder over here. Okay. So here's my pedestal grind, uh, grinder, and it's, uh, it's in a very old Queen City. So what I got to do is, if you'll look at each side here, you'll see the tool rest. Okay, this side for the course wheel is the, cor is the correct height, and it's actually adjustable here on the side. You can adjust this plate up and down, and it pivots here. You can move this in and out. This one's always been fine. This side over here, I don't know what's happened with that, but it's always been this way. And I've always wanted to fix it. And, then, and of course, you never get around to your own stuff because you're always busy working. So I'm tired of dealing with this because the tool rest is below the center line of the wheel. Whenever you grind your tool bits, if you have your tool rest set on the center line or just above, when you come in with your tool bit, the radius of the wheel with it being above center line creates your relief angle underneath the, the cutting edge. Okay, so this side is below the center line. So you have to actually hold your tool up, or I used to actually have a block just kind of clamped up here. All right, so what I want to do is fix this so that this is the, the right height. And what I need is I need one inch of space higher for this plate to sit on. So I found me a uh, piece of 1x3 steel flat bar and what I'm going to do is cut it, do some milling and drill and tapping and I'll take this plate off, the 1x3 will bolt right here to this piece and then this plate is going to mount to the top of that one there and then I can adjust this one in and out. Okay. So that's what I want to get done today. I'm ready to get this done because we got some tool grinding here to do pretty soon. I got to get into that chip off with uh, Tom Lipton. <laughs> All right, let me get started. Okay, I got the. I took the plate off. All right, here's the plate that was mounted on there. You see, you got two holes there where it, where it, where it bolts down. You know, I don't know if this was an original piece of the machine. It seems like it would be, but I really don't know. There's even been a torch cut right here to give a little clearance on this clamp here. But um, so here's my one-inch uh, plate that I'm going to use. If you set that up there, we got to clean and get some of this paint off here. Set that up there. All right, this will be bolted down, and then I'll have this plate mounted on here also mounted right here and that'll bring me to the right height that I need to be. And so this side's good. I can lay one of my scales across here like this and it's just about the right height. I mean, just about there. So that'll work out good. So this is what we're going to do. Alright, first machine work I'm going to do here, this is the existing top plate. I want to use these uh, 3 8 flathead bolts. The original bolts are uh, 5 16 so I got to open these slots up to 3 8 so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to line it up with a 5 16 end mill and this is a five and a half inch center to center distance so I'll do this one, step it over five and a half and open that one up and then whenever I drill and tap my new steel plate I'll know um, I'm going to be on a five and a half inch center to center distance and uh, another thing is the, uh, the steel plate that I'm going to uh, have for the riser well I'll have it drilled to where it'll bolt down to the existing holes on the grinder and off to the side of those I'll have it drilled and tapped for these bolts to go in there for this top plate to slide all right I got a 3 8 end mill in there and I'm gonna cut that slot and I'm gonna see how the bolt fits I may end up going in there with a 10 millimeter just to give it a little bit of clearance in the slot but this may work so we'll just try it and uh, 
The only thing I'm really concerned about is having an equal center to center distance, so I've got it lined up with the slot. And I'm just going to come down through here. I'm just going to feel the, uh, the end of the slot here. Okay. Okay, that's the end there. All right. So looks like the uh, the chamfer disc machine in here. I don't know what somebody did. It actually looks like a ball mill. Somebody used a ball mill in there. This one's deeper on this side, but I hadn't been able to check it till now because slot wasn't big enough so I may have to go in here with a with an end mill and go ahead and uh, cut this chamfer like it needs to be all right there's an there's a uh, end mill that looks like somebody's ground and it looks like it matches up to the uh, 82 degree uh, angle of a flathead bolt and I'm just going to use that it doesn't matter if it's off a little bit I just want to make sure that the head of this bolt goes down below the surface here. But I think we'll be really close with this cutter. Alright, I'm just going to feed it until... Uh, looks like I'm getting a nice cut all the way around. The angle isn't perfect, but I believe it'll do what I want it to do. So, I know I gotta go a little deeper, but thinking, thinking I might try a chamfering tool and see if I can uh, clean that thing up. Let me try that. Alright, I found a chamfering tool, a, a multi-flute chamfering tool that I think is the right angle. It's not stamped on it, so I had to check it with an angle gauge and show it looks like 41 degrees. So I'm going to try this one, see how it looks. Okay. Alright, that fits a lot better. So I need a little more depth out of it. just below the surface.
So a minute ago I told you that center to center to sitter distance wrong. I just looked at it with a scale, it looked like five and three quarter, but it was actually five and thirteen sixteenths. That one's going in there. It's going in there good, but I want to go ahead and, and uh, just kind of touch it up with the chamfering tool, it's just so it's kind of seating good on the flat. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna call that one done. This side doesn't look too good, but you know, this is my stuff. I'm not worried about all that. As long as it holds it down, which I know it will, that's all we're worried about here. So I'm gonna get this out. We're gonna start on the steel plate, on the uh, piece of flat bar, should I say. All right, got the flat bar in there, and uh, it actually squared up nice in the vise. It's down hard on the parallels. And I don't even know if I'm going to worry about, I thought I was going to have to mill the sides just to square it up to hold it because it's hot rolled. But it's nice and flat. See, here's the top plate. And you see how rough it is on the bottom. I'm not worried about all that. But I set it on there. It sits nice and flat. I don't have any rocking, so probably just leave this alone. But what I'm going to do is uh, square up the sides because... I cut it just a little bit longer than eight inches and I want to just go ahead and true the ends up so that I got a nice end to work off of up my center distances. I'm just going to use a little hog mill, three quarter hog mill. Actually I think this is 13 sixteenths but it doesn't matter. Trying to blow through this thing as fast as I can. that side clean up good all right it's got the uh, 12 inch steer veneers all right we're gonna read outside so we got about 35 measurement right there so right there's about 40 so we'll just take a uh, just take a light cut across there Now this is one of the coarse roughing mills, so it doesn't leave a really nice smooth finish. This is mainly just made for uh, hogging metal, and you use it to hog some metal, and then you use a regular end mill to uh, finish up your job. But all I want to do is just get it to size, so that right there is good with me. Uh, 
Alright, and it looks like I'm on 8 inches. Okay, so next step is uh, put some holes in here. Okay. I'm going to go inch and a quarter from the end, inch and a quarter from the side here. That should be our first hole, then we'll step it down. These are 5 16 bolts, so I'm gonna. This is a, a letter O drill bit because it's gonna give it just a few extra thousands clearance. I want it. I want it to be a pretty close fit and not shift around on me. Um, so I'm just using a letter O. I'm going to use a 12 millimeter end mill to cut the counter bore for this bolt here. I believe this is sort of a non standard size. Uh, the head of a cap screw should be 7 16 I believe, but this one's measuring over, so it's not the. My counter bore size is wrong for this, so I'm going to use an end mill. So I'm going to use a 12 millimeter. That'll give it a little bit of clearance there. All right. How deep do we need? All right, five sixteenths head, so we'll go just over five sixteenths deep with it. I'll just touch off. Let me set my zero here, so I'm not rubbing the cutter a bunch. All right, all right, touching off there. Got the table locked. What I like to try to do is feed it a little and then back off to try to break them chips, but it's kind of inevitable. They're going to start stringing up on you here. That's right, 200. Three hundred. All right, there's fifteen. I'll just go to twenty thousandths, and that should work. Yeah, the bolt ain't gonna go all the way down, is it? Nah, it's hitting the vise. But I flip it over there, and I can see that it's just below it, so that'll work. All right, so I just got to step her down, do this again. And then I'm going to put uh, two tap holes in there. I'll bring you back. All right, working on the other side here. Uh, just getting this side counterboard. And we'll move on to some tap holes. All right, guys, the next step is to drill and tap the two holes for the top plate to bolt down to. I offset a half inch from these holes here and that'll be that'll give me just enough metal there that it'll clear I'm just going to spot it and drill it tap it old drill I think needs a regrind Gonna use a three flute spiral point.
Okay, that looks good. Alright, I'm going to move it down. And uh, I'm not going to count it, but I have this hole set on zero. So I'm going to eyeball it back to zero on this end. lined up. Lined up there. So we'll uh let me drill and tap it and we'll see how it fits. Okay. Okay. Alright that works good. See there's our adjustment which you'll never use all that. You're only going to use in ten, 10 years I might move it a half inch or three quarters of an inch. Okay, I'm happy with that. So, let's go try it on the grinder and see how it all fits up. Alright, I'm bolting the plate down. It, it looks like the, uh, the hole pattern that was in this original piece here must have been off just a touch from 5 and 13 sixteenths. Because, uh, I mean, the bolts are going in there, they're just a little bit snug, so it's indicating it's rubbing on the holes here that I put in. But we're making it work. They're in there now. And it, it ain't never going nowhere again. It's just going to stay right there. Okay. So the next thing is to uh, bolt the top plate down. I've got to get my wrench here. All right, the top plate, the tool wrist. Looks like it's going to work out good. Get the damn bolt started. So we got plenty, plenty of adjustment to go in, but like I said, you, you'll never really use all that. You know, whenever these wheels get worn down so far, it's best just replace them. But I'll have these on here a long time. I think I put these wheels on here probably about four years ago. So, and everything looks good. I'll bring you in for a closer shot here. You can see that it's pretty well centered on each side of the wheel here. You see, I, I got plenty of adjustment, so I can move it a little bit. And then what, what you want to do is uh, you just want to bring it up really close to the wheel and uh, snug it down. You want it as close as you can without, your, without actually rubbing into it. So I'll go ahead and just adjust it real quick. snug her down okay that thing's ready to roll ready to roll and grind tool bits so let me find a tool bit here I'll show you what I'm talking about okay so Here's a good, looks like 5 8 yeah, this is one of my 5 8 tool bits, where I got a chip breaker on each side, you can see you can come in here, now I can come in here like this, and whenever I'm grinding it, with it being just above the center line of the wheel, it's going to naturally create the relief that I need on the bottom side this this here and the same thing if I come over here and grind it on the side like this 
it's going to it's going to create this relief angle here. So I'm excited. Finally got this thing done after so many years, and uh, it was just a real quick and dirty uh, fix, but it but it fits good and it's going to work great. So uh, next thing I want to do is get these wheels trued up, and I'll be ready to start grinding some tool bits again.